Wheat Check, Rice Check, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are on the third moon of Jupiter in their spacesuits, attempting to pull Major Robertson out of a crevice into which he has fallen. Buzz has lowered Happy into the crevice where thousands of beetle-like insects are swarming. Beetles that seem impervious to the cold and lack of atmosphere. Just a couple more feet, sir. That's it, sir. Soap the rope under the Major's arms, Happy. Just a minute, sir. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Moon Beetles. The hour has struck. Yes, today is the last time we can offer you a pair of those wonderful new space binoculars that you can see way off in the distance with. Big four-power plastic space binoculars. Five inches wide, five inches long. Plenty big and plenty of fun. Gang, you can watch people blocks away, study birds in real tall trees, read signs way off in the distance, spot planes high in the sky, and listen, you wear space binoculars on your head. Yes, sir, a strong elastic band holds them snugly to your eyes, makes you look like a strange man from Mars, leaves your hands absolutely free. Yes, the hour has struck. Today is the last time we can offer you these terrific new Space Patrol space binoculars. To get a pair exactly like Buzz Corey wears, do this. Buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an Instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 6. Eight, six, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, today's Space Patrol story, The Moon Beetles. In their space battle cruiser, Terra 5, Buzz and Happy are approaching Jupiter's number two moon to investigate the mysterious failure of equipment in one of the automatic instrument stations. Their view scope is trained on a surface of a cold, barren, airless satellite as Happy watches for the dome-shaped image of the atmosphere shell to reveal they're nearing the unmanned instrument station. Jupiter's number two moon sure is a desolate place. Nothing but craters and mountains, and more craters and mountains. And they all look the same. I don't even recognize any landmarks. We should have brought Robbie along. He knows most of Jupiter's satellites the way you and I know the Earth's moon. Oh, uh, uh, speaking of Major Robertson, sir, I was a little surprised to find out he was meeting us on Jupiter. Oh? Well, I figured he'd be getting ready for the big day on Terra on the third of the month. Uh, you know, the Interplanetary Medal Award ceremony. I hope we can all be there. We will if we don't run into serious trouble on this instrument failure investigation. But, sir, doesn't the Major have to be there or to receive the award? Well, I was under the impression that the name of the person to receive the Interplanetary Medal was kept secret until the day of the ceremony. What makes you think uh, Robbie's going to get it? Hmm? Well, I, uh... I heard rumors. <laughs> well, personally, I'd like to see Major Robertson get it, too. The final decision is up to the award committee. Well, they aren't going to let the news out ahead of time. You know, we're getting close to the instrument station, Happy. See those two cone-shaped peaks at the edge of that broad, shallow crater? Yes, sir. The instrument station is right between those peaks. Well, that's funny. What's that, Commander? The small atmosphere shell should be visible now. Maybe the sunlight's hitting it at the wrong angle. Well, it should still show up in the view scope. Happy, the shell's gone. Huh? Switch the space phone receiver to the ultra-high frequency automatic instrument channel and see if any signals are getting out. Yes, sir. Well, this is the right channel, sir. Some of the instruments are still sending, but I can't understand what happened to that atmosphere dome. Uh, maybe a meteor hit it. If it came in at a tangent, it might break the shell without damaging all the instruments. 
Get our spaces, Happy, while I set the ship down. We'll make an on-the-spot check. saying there weren't even any fragments of the atmosphere, sir? That's right, Robbie. The whole thing just disappeared. Mm -hmm. And none of the instruments were physically damaged? No, Doctor. Some of them stopped transmitting because of the cold. It really got us puzzled, Dr. Conrad. What do you think could have happened? Well, Happy, I wouldn't even speculate until a thorough investigation is made. At the moment, Doctor, I feel this is a job for the security section. Robbie, get a lab ship and blast off for moon number two. Yes, sir. Uh, Do you want me to go with the Major, Commander? Uh, You'll be needed here in Chargon, Doctor. We've got to evaluate the data from the other moon centers. I'll keep in contact with you from number two moon and give you any information I can gather. Good. Robbie, I'll leave the investigation in your hands. Happy now, I'll go to our temporary quarters and get some rest. I can use a little sleep. I'll call you first thing in the morning, Dr. Conrad. Come on, Happy. Sleep is the next order. Happy. Happy, wake up. Hmm? Oh, Commander, what time is it? Six zero five hours, Universal Star Time. Are you going to sleep all day? Oh, drop it, Jupiter. I plan to be awake before you, sir. <laughs> Say, are you sure it's 6.05? Look at your watch. Yeah, but it's still dark outside. That's why I left the shade up, figuring the sun would wake me yes, up. Yes, I noticed how dark it was. Maybe we're having an eclipse of the sun. They're fairly frequent on Jupiter with 12 moons in the sky. I'm sure I should have thought of that. Uh, have you talked to Dr. Conrad? I phoned his lab, but wasn't able to reach him. <laughs> Maybe he overslept, too. From the sound of things outside, it sounds like the middle of the day. Oh, come here and look, sir. The streets are full of people. These Chargon citizens must be early risers, <laughs> or else they got up to see the eclipse. The eclipse here wouldn't cause that much excitement. What do you know? The lights are on all over the city. Well, that must be Dr. Conrad. I told the charge quarters to put the call in here. Corey speaking. Uh, Commander, this is Dr. Conrad. Oh, yes, Doctor. I've already called your lab. I'm not at the laboratory. I'm at the spaceport. Can you come over? Is something wrong? Haven't you noticed the darkness? Yes. The four biggest moons must be eclipsing the sun all at once. This is no eclipse, Commander. The Shergon atmosphere shell is completely covered with insects. Insects? Yes, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. They're blanketing the entire dome. Billions of them. Space control isn't letting any ship in or out of the space lots. They're afraid the insects will swarm into the city. Doctor, where are you now? I'm in the space portmaster's office. I'll be right over. I'm ready, Commander. And let's go. Well, here's the office, Captain. Uh, Commander. I expected you sooner. I was beginning to get worried. We were tied up in traffic, Doctor. People are running around almost in a panic. Well, I can't say I blame them. It's not exactly reassuring to know you're under a roof of billions of living insects. I didn't think Jupiter had that many insects. Where did they all come from? We don't know. One spaceship came through the lock just at dawn. The pilot said the insects are like a shiny black sea all around the atmosphere dome. I've got a few specimens here, Commander, in these two small plastic boxes. Let's have a look at them. Hundreds of insects were drawn through the space lock when the ship entered. That's why space control closed the port. Look at rockets. Look at the size of them. They must be about two inches long. They seem to be some sort of beetle. I don't recognize them. Well, I showed them to a friend of mine in the communication section, an amateur entomologist. He says he's never seen anything like them before on any planet. Very strange. 
Entirely new variety of insects appearing by the billions and here on Jupiter of all places. Mm. Hey, hey, one of the bugs got loose. He's crawling across the desk. You take the lid off the box, Happy? No, sir. Look, the lid is still on it. Then how did it get out? Hey, listen, what's that? Warning signal. Yellow alert. Yellow alert. Something must be wrong with the city's atmosphere plan. Happy, quickly. Close all the windows airtight. Doctor, cut on the emergency air vents. What could be the matter? That signal means the air outside this building isn't fit to breathe. Check the Polaroid windows. All the windows are closed tight, sir. Airtight. Good. Emergency air vents on, Commander. We're all right for the time being. Yes, Doctor, but those people out in the streets, if they don't get inside a building with emergency air supply, they're in trouble. I'll get it. Courtmaster's office. Oh, he isn't here. This is Commander Corey of the Space Patrol. I see. Yes, Captain, your procedure's correct. Right, Corey, out. That was the atmosphere control center. The yellow alert was sounded because the detectors registered a high methane gas content in the air. Methane? You mean, you mean there's a leak in the atmosphere shell? More than a leak, a serious break. What happened? Look at this plastic box, Doctor. Mm -hmm. There is a, a hole in it. Exactly. That beetle ate through the plastic box. And above us, there are billions of insects eating their way through the plastic atmosphere shell. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Presenting the mystery of the baffling basketball player. Sometimes this ten-year-old boy would be a sharpshooter. He'd make basket after basket after basket. But then, at other times, ouch, he'd miss shot after shot. And so it went. Sometimes a shooting star, sometimes a falling star. Here was the trouble. This boy was only getting supercharged now and then. On some mornings, he'd have a power breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks, the super cereals that helped us supercharge you. That's when he'd really shoot those baskets. But then, at other times... Well, he'd just eat any old breakfast. And that's when they'd call him Fumbler. So, gang, remember, to be a winner every day, you have to get supercharged every day. In other words, enjoy that rice checks and wheat checks in your cupboard all the time, not just some of the time. Make it a rule to do what Buzz Corey does. Eat a power breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks every single day. The bite-sized super cereals that help to supercharge you. Delicious checks. <laughs> And now, back to our Space Patrol story, The Moon Beetles. The city of Shargon on the planet Jupiter is periled by a vast swarm of strange insects that completely cover the atmosphere shell. These beetle-like insects are gnawing through the thick plastic of the transparent dome over the city, and now the air is contaminated with the harmful gases that compose Jupiter's atmosphere. Buzz Happy and Dr. William Conrad have rushed to the atmosphere washing plant while Major Robertson, at the commander's order, is at the spaceport, ready to lead an exterminator squadron. Happy and the doctor are standing before the giant motors that force the atmosphere through chemical filters and purifiers, waiting for Buzz to return from the office of the chief air control engineer. Well, the engineer's just cut on another auxiliary motor. Uh -huh. That's the last one. The plant's working at full capacity. Yeah, but so are those bugs. Oh, here's the commander. Commander, what did the chief engineer say? Oh, it's a losing battle. You just can't build up enough pressure inside the shell to equal the heavy Jupiter atmosphere pressure on the outside. Unless those insects are stopped, pretty soon big chunks of the dome will fall in on the city. They could plunge right through the roof. Well, do you think that DB-12X insecticide will kill the bugs, Commander? I don't know. And if I give Robbie the order to take the exterminator squadron outside the shell, that insecticide will contaminate the entire city. You mean it's harmful to human beings? Definitely. But don't you think it's worth the risk, Commander? If the dome collapses... Oh, you're right, Doctor. There's no time to waste. We'll broadcast a warning for everyone to keep off the streets and to seal their doors and windows. Then we'll go back to Space Patrol headquarters and I'll tell Robbie to take the squadron up. Commander, the streets have been completely cleared and the Major and the squadron have been spraying the outside of the dome for 20 minutes. The DB-12X ought to be showing some results. If it's going to work, I'll contact Robbie. Commander Corey at Shargon Space Patrol Headquarters calling Major Robertson aboard Space Patrol Cruiser J-571. Corey to Major Robertson. Robertson.
Just in here. Go ahead, Commander. Is it working, Robbie? All eight ships have made ten passes with the insecticide, Commander. The insects are saturated with the stuff, but it doesn't seem to phase them. We've got to find something that's effective and find it quickly. Well, heat might do it. We can get enough ships with atomic flame ejectors and play them over the dome. There aren't any on Jupiter. What about trying ultrasonic vibrations? That's it. That'll do it, Commander. Dr. Conrad, you know of a lab ship here in Chargon that's got an ultrasonic generator in it? No, oh, yes, Commander. There is one at the space force. Good. Robbie, order the squadron to return to base, but you stay aloft. Happy, Dr. Conrad and I will get the lab ship and blast off immediately. Lab ship secured for blast off, Commander. All right, Hap, I'll notify Space Control. Commander Corian, lab ship X211 in area 28, calling Space Control Shargon. Space Control Shargon, go ahead. We're ready for blast off. You may blast off at Wilter. Space Control out. Stand by to fire rockets, Happy. Standing by, sir. Ready, Doctor? Yes, Commander. Fire rockets. Here come the lock, sir. Reduce power and we'll circle back to the dome. What a sight. The dome is black with those insects. I hope this ultrasonic generator does the trick. I'd hate the idea of going back down through that roof of beetles. Dr. Conrad, will you operate the generator? Of course, Commander. That must be the major ship off on our starboard viewport. Right. Corey aboard lab ship X-211 calling Major Robertson. Robertson here. Go ahead, sir. We're going to make a head-on pass at the dome, Robbie. Good hunting. All right, Doctor. Turn on the generator. I've set it at one million cycles, Commander. That frequency should be fatal to most insects. Give it plenty of power. Yes, Commander. Here we go, right over the dome. Happy, set the viewscope to high magnification. Yes, sir. We'll circle back and make another pass. How's the viewscope setting, sir? Fine. You can see the insects quite clearly. Mm, they don't seem to be affected by the vibration. Uh, shall I increase the frequency? Oh, wait. Look, they're dropping off the dome. Hey, they sure are. Sliding off by the thousands. It's working, Commander. The sides of the dome are nearly clear. Would you look at that? They're sliding off like, like a black avalanche. We'll make a couple more passes just to make sure we've got them all. Look at how they're heaping up around the base of the atmosphere shell. It's going to be some job clearing them away. The first problem is to get a crew to work sealing up those holes in the dome. Commander, this is Robbie. Yes, Robbie? More trouble. I just got word that there's a plague of those beetles on moon number three. They've attacked the small atmosphere shell over the research station. That could disrupt the entire interplanetary communication system, to say nothing of ruining all space flight aid stations. Hey, we'd better get out there with the ultrasonic generator. It wouldn't work on that moon, Happy. There's no atmosphere to transmit the high-frequency sound of the insects. They've got to be brought under control. Smoke and rockets. Well, there are 100 men on that station. They can't even be evacuated because they can't open the space locks. What's wrong with the power unit? Communications picked up automatic signals that indicate a relay didn't work. If somebody could get there, get inside the power unit shell, and tip that switch, the research station would have power restored. But how about the insects? Doctor, the new delta ray, would that destroy the insects? Yes, but it had to be focused so that the rays wouldn't penetrate the shell, or it would destroy the men inside, too. Is there a delta ray here in Chargon? No, the nearest one is in Jupiter City. Robbie, you blast off from moon number three and get that power on. Happy and I'll go to Jupiter City for the Delta Ray and join you on the moon at the research station. There's the research station, Happy. We'll cut our speed and circle. I'll get the Delta Ray ready. Now, don't turn it on till I give you the word. We've got to be sure of our focusing range. Yes, sir. Wow, look at that dome. Just like the one at Chargon. Covered with beetles. Well, there's Robbie's ship near the dome. I wonder if the major's got the power on yet. I don't think so. We'd be hearing from him. Just look at those insects all around the station. At least they aren't attacking the power unit, though. Major Robertson calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. Major Robertson calling Commander Corey. Corey here. Where are you, Robbie? Uh, in a pretty tight spot, Commander. Did you get the Delta Ray? What's the trouble? I was in my spacesuit walking toward the power unit shell when these compounded beetles attacked me. Rolled all over me. Beat them off. I fell into a crevice near the power shell, and I'm wedged in. We'll land and pull you out. I don't want to rush you, but these insects are eating my spacesuit. I managed to brush them off the plastic face piece, but they're all over me. Any 
better, Dollar. They're going to puncture the suit. We'll set the ship down right away. Happy, get out our space suits and some rope. It's working. The beetles are dropping off the shell like like flies. Well, this ray works better than the ultrasonic generator. See that, Robbie? Yeah. Really shoveling them up. How's your leg? A little better. Good. As we wipe out the beetles, we'll land and turn the power unit on. Hey, if we can clean this up and blast off for terror pretty soon, we'll, we'll be able to get the major back for the interplanetary award ceremony. Funny, I almost forgot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go on up, Major. Uh, the commander's ready to give you the medal. Quiet, Happy. The commander's going to speak. Fellow citizens of the United Planets, it's my privilege and honor as last year's recipient of the Interplanetary Award to present this symbol of courage and service to the current winner. It's a special source of pride to me because the award goes to a member of my own space patrol. Major, the commander's looking this way. He wants you to go up. The choice this year was a difficult one for the committee, and the person chosen by them has declined the honor. But, Major, I... I Quiet, think... half. The commander's speaking. Yes. The selected candidate, Major Robertson, security chief of the Space Patrol, feels that the interplanetary award should go to the man who risked his own life to save another, and thereby help save the lives of a hundred men. So, in a special session, the committee accepted the Major's suggestion. And I shall now present the Interplanetary Award to a member of the Corps of Cadets, Cadet Happy. Huh? Me? Me? But, but I, 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 I... Go on, Happy. Get up there. Hey, Happy. Half. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll have to ask Major Robertson to accept the award for Cadet Happy. It seems the courageous winner of the Interplanetary Award has just fainted. (laughs) 
An exciting preview of next week's thrilling Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. But first, gang, here it is. Here's the only way to get a pair of Space Patrol space binoculars. Now, all you do is... Uh Uh-oh. Here's a radio ray from Terra. Boys and girls, this is your commander, and I have a message for you that's so important, I've interrupted Dick Tufel. Now, here's my message. Today is positively the last time we can offer you a pair of official space binoculars. This is the greatest offer we've ever made, and it's one item I feel that every one of you should have. All those thousands and thousands of boys and girls now have their space binoculars. I know for a fact that many of you have still not sent in. So don't wait. This is important and vital. Send in today for your Space Patrol space binoculars. This is absolutely the last time we can make this sensational offer. Hurry out. Thank you, Commander. And boys and girls, remember this. These are not flimsy goggles. They're real, full-size, full-field, four-power binoculars made of long-lasting plastic. Real, full-size, full-field, four-power binoculars that make everything in the distance look bigger, closer, clearer. The revolutionary new binoculars you wear on your head. Thrills and fun galore. You can identify buildings way off in the distance, spot planes, study birds, watch far-off traffic, read distant signs, and do lots and lots of other things with your space binoculars all year long. Now, to get a pair, buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an Instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. If you don't agree, your binoculars are tops. Return them, and we'll return your money. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> And now, an exciting preview of next week's thrilling Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy have just left Terra 5 to enter a damaged spaceship far out beyond the Pluto orbit. They've entered the wrecked ship in their spacesuits to rescue two unconscious men. Around the ship, huge chunks of metal hurtle through space on an unknown orbit. You'll have to carry them, Happy. You take this one, I'll handle the big fellow. Yes, sir. Hey, Commander. The ships are swerving right into that stream of... Metal fragments. I thought I set the controls to keep pace with them. Aha! Those fragments aren't going in a straight line. They're in a swirling motion like a whirlpool. Hey, Commander! They're battering the ship to pieces. They're breaking us up. we got to get these men in sight quickly. Before the fragments cook the ship. Well, we're finished, all of us. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Strange Gift of the New Star, when wheat checks, rice checks, And good, hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! (laughs) High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Visions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! (laughs) Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Ken Mayer and Bela Kovach. Dick Tufeld speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol! Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC TV station. Consult your paper for time and channel. Space Patrol comes to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.